I am going to introduce our new Rotary International Director. Uh, he is uh, running second right now in the most memed character of 2024. I'll leave it to your imagination as to who's uh, number one, Patrick Eeks. Well, thank you, Chris. Uh, didn't know how that introduction would go, and um, now I know. Now I know. <laughs> Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome to our first Zoom formation call of 2024-25. Uh, it's really good to see so many friends uh, and so many smiling faces on this call. Really good, good to see you all. Uh, and happy Rotary New Year, you know, because we're just one week into the new year. I was thinking about this call, preparing for it, and thinking back to when uh, Past Director David Stovall moved us from uh, a written newsletter that was distributed digitally uh, to calls that were at that time pretty much a report out from directors and, and trustees and how that has continued on. It's really taken hold. David, thank you for, for this format. I think uh, I think we all prefer it and uh, a good chance to engage with, with each other. So happy to, to continue that tradition. I, and before I get too far into this, I want to thank three people, uh, Chris Justice, who you just heard, uh, and Sean Patty, who do so much of the MC and production of these calls, as well as Cookie Billings, uh, my new chief of staff, who has done the organization to, to get everybody together and get us all uh, organized for today. So thank you to, to all three of those folks. Um, we're going to start off, as you might expect, with a bit of a report on Hurricane Barrel and the impact uh, that that storm has had in districts 70, 30, and 70, 20. Uh, of course, the storm came right through the middle of those districts uh, and has uh, definitely left a mark. I've asked David Edwards, past district governor from District 7030, and also the current disaster chair uh, for 7030 to give us a report. I know many of you uh, know David, certainly among our most respected past governors across the two zones. So, David, I'm going to uh, ask you to give that report now. Uh, thank you, Director Patrick and Good afternoon to all, and thanks for the opportunity to present, um, not only from my district, but beyond, on behalf of District 7020. Uh, there, um, DG Dominique and my DG Debbie from 7030. Um, of course, I think we all know Beryl, or have heard of Beryl, and uh, only a few minutes ago I saw Beryl now has over 2 million people in Texas without electricity. So Beryl is still causing her problems. So just a quick um, overview of what's happening and uh, uh, um, a request of you to, to help wherever you can. Um, so here we go. The islands that were impacted in green, we have Barbados and Cayman, um, not heavily impacted, and that's why they're in green, and to a large extent, they're able to see after themselves. So just putting it there for the record that they've had uh, barrel as well, but um, sort of no further action is being recommended for them. And then I go over to Grenada. We will do Grenada, Jamaica, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. What we did for immediate response for both districts, and we speak on both districts here, uh, we, we immediately offer helping hands and supplies, short-term assistance, uh, help the affected communities wherever we can through funds and materials to re-establish re the day-to-day. -day. And the long-term rebuilding, we plan and implement projects that will rebuild the affected communities. And just credit to the, for the images we are going to use. Um, 7030 and 7020 did uh, appeal posters. Don't don't worry about the, the links. They'll be posted in the chat and it'll be sent out to you. So just quickly with some pictures, um, Barbados, as I said, uh, just coastline and, and fishing industry, but they're going to handle themselves. But I, I just put the picture for the effect of what's going on. <laughs> And then we move to Grenada. So Grenada, a, a triadan state, the mainland did have some um, damage as well, but they can handle themselves there. But the islands of Cariaco and Petit Martinique, uh, they are severely affected. 
uh, was clicking the I pass right over Caracol and Petty Martinique, and 98% of the buildings are destroyed, uh, and they need significant help uh, with rebuilding, as you would imagine. Um, and also in Caracol, they had one of the, the most um, significant mangroves anywhere in the Caribbean area. I've had the, well, not privileged, but I've had to be in there with my boat over time before. I know they were significant. And that, this picture shows some of the, the effect of where the mangroves have ended up in the houses. So you can imagine the destruction and the power of the ocean to tear them up and put them inland. Uh, and then there's destruction of the grid, uh, all communications. Um, so a major cleanup effort is on the way, and, but they, they are getting food and supplies now from the mainland. So that's, that's being taken care of as the immediate effect. Uh, of course, they'll need a major cleanup uh, and then commence building repairs, getting the communication system back up. And from a rotary standpoint, we do not have a rotary on the ground in these very, in, on these smaller islands, but there was a community core there some years ago. And we have found the two of the persons are still around and they are going to set back up uh, um, the community core. So that's that's a good rotary and, um, point there. Then in Jamaica, um, the more severely impacted parts of the southern coast and St. Elizabeth, St. Elizabeth Parish. Um, I, know, I know from reports we have had is that um, generally the drive um, from Kingston to Port Antonio is pretty okay now normal signs of wind damage and so on, hospitals uh, running normally. But in southwestern Jamaica, Clarendon to Westmoreland, um, and the report is such as Rocky Point, Portland Cottage have been severely impacted, with massive flooding, roofs and villages and buildings damaged. Fish report have lost boats, fish pots and livelihoods in uh, but generally, the, the, the big impact is their agricultural belt, um, where I, I, I read a report, um, the yam production, uh, over 80% of their yam production that's exported has been lost now, and certainly also the bananas and plantains and that type of thing, uh, a major industry. So they have a serious impact on the agriculture in, um, in the sector. And lack of electricity, water supply. Um, and then since then, they've had a tropical wave with heavy rains and flooding again. So um, more assessments are being done in Jamaica as we speak. Um, but I thank um, Harish and Mike for assisting in getting, getting this to us quickly to, to add into the program. And then we turn to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So St. Vincent, the mainland, um, has its own challenges and damage, but they can see after that internally. But their islands, uh, especially Canawan, Union Island, Miro, um, and to a much lesser extent, Betquay, are uh, heavily, heavily impacted, just as Carrier Cool, which is a part of Grenada, but they're next door, um, have been impacted. And the, the photos are just ready for impact because some of them um, there are so many pictures coming in. Sometimes we're not even sure uh, we have the right island. The, the, the population of some of these little islands, um, Bekwe, biggest of all, but they're not as bad. Canawan, though, Myro and, and Union, they, they are the ones with the, the small population, but major, major damage, as you see from the photos. Um, photo here of a Catholic church, you see the cross is still there. Uh, but I've spent many, many, many times in that particular church when I visit. So uh, they have approximately 1,009 persons up from the three islands that have been um, displaced and are in shelters in the, on the mainland. Uh, and of course, power, water, and internet uh, all are in the process of being restored, but that's a major task because of the geography of the place. Um, rotary, the rotary impact so far and what I've been doing, a needs assessment was done yesterday at a shelter crawl. 
this basically was visiting all the, the persons in the shelter to find out, you know, like what they owned and, and what their immediate needs would be. And then the Rotarians are going in with a medical floating doctor support on, on a boat on July the 13th, that's shortly. And then they already have started um, a separate project to get supplies for the school children um, to restart in August. And just some pictures and some other things that are being planned, uh, psychosocial support and that type of thing. And of course, we want to get the economies of these small islands going again. The, the boat shown here is the typical type of boat running be between the islands. Just did that to let you see what, what's going on there. So um, the disaster response teams have been activated, offering uh, immediate help short term raising funds and long term completing the assessments and the plan uh, for implementing projects to rebuild and of course we want to uh, support the local economies in all the affected islands so our our call to you and i thank you for listening is for donations to the two districts is appreciated we don't want um, necessarily for persons to send clothes and that type of thing. It's not needed. We can get through without that, um, but we need the funds to support the projects as stated. So, Director Patrick, thank you for the opportunity on behalf of DG Debbie and DG Dominique. David, thank you for that report. I know uh, many, of us, many of us have been wondering, wanting to get more details. Uh, and uh, folks, that's our brothers and sisters. Uh, there in those affected countries, uh, we're, we're we're fortunate that some areas were spared, but those that were hit were hit hard. Uh, and you can see in the chat that we have their links where you can offer support. I can tell you that uh, my wife and I, Kristen and I, have already donated one hundred dollars U.S. to both District Seventy Twenty and to Seventy Thirty. Uh, those links will allow you to offer your support as well. Um, if later you decide you'd like to do something, you can simply go to our Zones 3334 webpage and uh, you'll see a red ribbon across there that'll take you to up-to-date information on what is happening there as well as uh, donation pages. And these donations are being facilitated uh, by the Rotary Action Group that is specifically in the business of uh, offering assistance after disasters. Uh, so it is a 501c3 for those of you who are in the U.S. Uh, that, that does make it a tax deductible donation. But more importantly, these dollars are flowing through uh, Rotarians, uh, will be implemented by Rotarians um, to the benefit of, the, of those affected communities. So I appreciate anything you can do to help those folks. So we're going to proceed with the, the rest of the program that we had uh, scheduled for today. And it's really focused around a couple of things. Um, you've heard about uh, a renewed emphasis on continuity of leadership and getting out of the thought of uh, my year, for instance, thinking about more continuous and unified direction year after year. Uh, those of you who've heard me have the opportunity uh, to speak of the way Jeremy has practiced that, uh, past immediate past director Jeremy, who I think is on the call, uh, the way he has uh, helped me prepare and also that we've had a unified vision in the direction uh, that we'd like to lead. We'd like to see that implemented uh, really at, at all levels of Rotary, and that is the plan. Um, so you will hear that thread through today as, uh, as we both hear from our outgoing regional leaders and our incoming regional leaders. Uh, those of you who attended last month, you heard from Lorraine Angelino, uh, who at that time was the outgoing Zone 33 Regional Rotary Foundation Coordinator. And we're pleased today to have her successor, uh, Bernie Rydell, who's from the Rotary Club of Hilton Head Island in District 7770. Um, he is in the unique position, position of both being an incoming Regional Rotary Foundation coordinator and an outgoing in Polio Now coordinator. Uh, so, Bernie, I'm going to turn the stage over to you now. All right. Uh, thank you, Patrick. Well, I remember like it was yesterday, the day I received my invitation to serve as RRFC. It was July 10, 2023, almost a year ago. And then after I accepted, that very same day, 
I received an email outlining the beginning of my training sessions. And I thought, what have I done here? Well, the training has been, let's say, plentiful and ongoing. Zooms, so many Zooms, and even two trips to Evanston. But it has all been worth it because I eventually got to do the good stuff, the fun stuff working with an amazing team of Rotary leaders, our Zone 33 Foundation team. Here they are. So now I know I do not have enough time to properly introduce everyone, but I do want to recognize them. So from the top left, skip that first guy, our two NPOLIO now coordinators, Colleen and Nancy, our endowment major gifts advisor, Beth, our three foundation major gift officers, Lori, John, and Tyler, our foundation annual giving officer, Katie, our immediate past RRFC, Lorraine, our newsletter editor, Angela, and then from bottom left, our five assistant RRFCs, Lance, Al, Lloyd, Stephen, and Debbie, our two major gifts initiative advisors, Don and Ann, and our newest coordinators responsible for overall grant support, Geetha and Lou. You see, this is why I am so excited about this year. Already it has been a joy and an honor to work with this team. From planning, developing, and executing our zone training back in April, which consisted of seven breakout sessions and five concurrent workshop sessions, all occurring in a day and a half, to assisting with the development of our Zone 3334 Foundation Regional Action Plan, commonly known as FRAP, to actually rolling out specific tactics, first for our endowment and next for our annual fund. These tactics are a step-by-step -step guide that will help our districts and clubs achieve their foundation goals, as well as our zone goals. But it's early in July, and we are just getting started. So as the Beatles once said, with a little help from my friends, there is much more to come. So stay tuned. So now I've been asked to reflect on my time as EPNC. So again, I must start at the beginning. It was January 11th, 2022. I was at home and my cell phone rang. It was Robert Hall. He said that EPNC Rocky Jacobs was stepping down and wanted to know if I would be interested in filling his position. Well, we talked for a while about the responsibilities of the position. And then he suggested, why don't you just think about it and let me know? And I said, not necessary. I would love to do it. I had been serving as our District 7770 Polio Plus Chair for a number of years and loved my job. So this was a no-brainer. Also, both Rocky and Chuck Davidson had been my mentors for years. Can't tell you how many times I would call or email them with some very, very basic questions. And they were always very kind and patient with their responses. After a few months, it became very clear to me that this was my rotary dream job. I had the opportunity to share my passion for the eradication of polio with so many other Rotarians. And I had no people responsibility. And I got to work with my new boss, Robert, and his boss, John Germ. Well, we finished 22-23, raising over $2.4 million for polio. And 15 of our 17 districts gave at least 20% of their DDF to polio. Not because of me, but the years of hard work that Rocky and Chuck put into developing this wonderful culture of giving to polio in Zone 33. Chuck Davidson would step down at the end of 22-23, and Colleen Bonadonna would become our new 
EPNC. Not long after it was announced that I would be serving as our RFC, it was also announced that Nancy Barbie would be officially replacing me effective July 1st, 2024. But unofficially, she started much, much earlier. And what a blessing she has been. Thank you so much, Nancy. Now, although 2324 total giving to polio is not official, I can tell you this. All 17 of our Zone 33 districts have given at least 20% of their DDF to polio. I believe this is a first for our zone. So thank you to all 17, 23, 24 DGs and DRFCs for making this amazing achievement possible. And to EPNC's Colleen and Nancy for their tireless work and leadership. Well done. And now I get to introduce my good friend and savior, EPNC, Nancy Barbie. Wow, Bernie, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. I, I'm just blown away and, and uh, we're so lucky to have you as RFC. Uh, I've been in that role before and, and followed Kay Davis and I'm now following in your footsteps and I've got some big shoes to full fill on, and I have on both occasions, but I'm so excited and honored to be one of the In Polio Now coordinators for Zone 33. This year, folks, is going to be epic because we are counting down to history to eradicate polio from the world. It is our number one priority. And our two zones consistently lead the world in contributions and leadership, as you heard Bernie say. Folks, eradicating polio is a history making accomplishment as this is the second disease ever eradicated and all of us all of you are a part of that history and so we're counting down to history for sure several years ago an olympic style torch that you see on my screen was carried around the world by australian suzanne ray with her world's greatest meal raising funds for polio plus some of you may be familiar and may have used this campaign to raise awareness and fundraising. I know that Robert Hall introduced this at his institute in Asheville many years ago, and we did have a world's greatest meal throughout the whole event. So this torch's final destination was the RI convention in Brazil, and we affectionately named it the Flame. I'm happy to announce that the flame has returned courtesy of past Zone 34 in Polio Now coordinator Bob Hagen. Bob is letting us borrow the flame to have on display at our summit in Pittsburgh, where we will celebrate World Polio Day on October the 24th together. But that's not all, folks. Your district will have the opportunity to use the flame in your own district for fundraising, community awareness, and to celebrate World Polio Day with your clubs by walking the last mile. Doesn't that sound exciting? I'm excited about it. Can you imagine the flame traveling all over zones 33 and 34 on its way to Pittsburgh? I sure can. It's really symbolic. But we, there is a qualification to have this honor. To qualify, you must make the 20% DDF contribution and have it posted by August 15th. Not too early, you can do it. I know our, toes, our two zones will be leaders in the world as always and help us as we walk that last mile counting down to history. I'm excited. This is gonna be a tremendous public image blowout throughout our zones. More information and details will be coming soon from your In Polio Now coordinators. Thank you so much for your support, as always. Now back to Director Patrick. Thank you so much, Nancy and Bernie. I have worked with both of you uh, through the years and very excited about uh, both roles that you're now taking on. So thank you for past service and for what you're taking on now. Uh, we're now going to go to Mike Dara, who is a member of the Rotary Club of South Jacksonville, Florida, and also 
our outgoing Rotary coordinator representing District 6970. Mike and I have worked together as Rotary coordinators. He survived that somehow and has managed to flourish. So Mike, take it away. Thanks, Patrick. First, let me explain. There are three Rotary coordinators on each zone. Rotary Public Image Coordinator, the Regional Rotary Foundation Coordinator, and the plain old Rotary Coordinator. So we're all appointed to three-year terms by our director. And those first two are pretty self-explanatory. The job I had as Rotary Coordinator covers everything else that isn't public image or foundation. It ends up being mostly membership issues, but it can get into interact, manual of procedure questions, or just helping our clubs get stronger. All three coordinators work together to train the district teams, and that includes the district governor chain, as well as the district committees in each of our areas. But the most important audience, it's the clubs, particularly the club presidents and presidents elect. They create the member experience in each of our 800 clubs in zone 34, and that determines if Rotary has an impact or if it's a dud. Our Rotary vision statement says, together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. The presidents of the Rotary Club are the most influential people in Rotary because they determine whether their club creates that great experience that makes us walk out of that feeling like, wow, or if we walk out just meh. The team that the president-elect puts together before they even start their year is crucial. If they do a great job, you and I constantly feel like we've had that change experience in ourselves as well as the world around us. So about three years ago to help on this, we started MAP, the Membership Action Plan. First, we created a database that's available in DACDB and in Club Runner, and it helps clubs understand whether they have trouble either finding or retaining members. Then we created monthly webinars where we get the most successful clubs from Zone 33 and 34 to explain how they do the four things that determine club success. First, create a fantastic club experience. Second, find great new members. Third, ask those members to a club and follow up and then finally, Engage them immediately so they enjoy that life-changing Rotary experience. And finally, we created awards for those clubs that create plans and that grow. Obviously, there's a lot that goes into making a club great. So we do our best to work with each district so they can spot clubs that need help and offer good, actionable ideas for improvement. Our focus is on building great teams, and that's where our work gets done. At the zone level, we have a seven-person zone coordinator team, which you see here. I will put in the contact information for these folks in chat once we finish. They're split, as you can see, by district and function. They work with the district and club teams to make clubs more vibrant and effective. Call on them if they can help your district or your club. So I'm gonna turn it over now to Mary Ligon, who will tell you what the Zone 34 membership team is doing as she leads them in the next three years. Mary. Thank you, Mike. I'd like you all to visualize with me for a moment. Imagine our regions and zones and districts as a flower garden with many different types of plants. We want to expand this garden for greater impact. In our gardens, we have some plants. They're special. They're called irresistibles. And we want those to spread as the primary plant in the garden. We also want to plant new varieties of irresistibles that have different characteristics. Maybe they have unique blooms or shapes or unusual colors 
Or maybe the characteristic they share is that they have a common cause, which may be they prefer shade, or they do best in sandy soil, or they like a lot of water. These will fill up the bare spots in our garden. Now, unfortunately, some of the plants in our garden are withering. By analyzing the needs of these plants, such as sunlight and water, weed control, plans can be developed for them specifically to go from dying to thriving with a special support team. You heard Mike talk about the Rotary Coordinator team. That's our team of master gardeners. Coop, Heather, Don, Barbara, Lyle, and Megan, with specialized help from our Zone ICA team, Joe, Dan, Felix, Audley, and Doug, are they're ready with encouragement fertilizer and special attention to assist you in developing more irresistibles, expanding your garden and the impact it has in your community. So in rotary terms, our plan is to assist districts and clubs in increasing the number of growing clubs. We also want to help districts and clubs in understanding the five elements of the club experience so that they enhance engagement and increase their irresistibility. And third, We'll support the development of new clubs through an exchange of ideas that will extend our reach and into specifically the next generation. The Zone 34 Rotary Coordinator team looks forward to helping your garden grow. Now let's hear from outgoing Zone 34 in Polio Now Coordinator, past District Governor Kim Waters. Hello, I'm Kim Waters, and I just completed year four of an in polio now coordinator role serving zone 34, specifically the state of Georgia. And Director Patrick asked that I speak to you regarding my role, my responsibilities, and my takeaways from this time. I'll start with telling you how my passion for polio eradication was ignited. That happened back when I was able to participate in a National Immunization Day. We went to India in 2017 during the year I served as governor. That led to my passion for polio eradication and why I served for four years as a polio in Polio Now coordinator. Our next in Polio Now coordinator also from District 6910, just happened to be with me on that National Immunization Day. Today, when I talk to you about my roles, my responsibilities, and my takeaways, I want to tell you what I felt like my primary role was. And that was reminding Rotarians, wherever I spoke, that polio eradication is our number one priority following up on a promise that we made to the world's children many years ago, we still have it in us to see that done. Our primary role, again, is reminding Rotarians that polio is our number one priority. And so what did I see? How did I do that? When I talked to clubs, districts, um, whenever I was asked to, whether it was to speak at a club or as a keynote at a, at, a, at a district conference, a pets presentation, whatever. My reminder was this is our number one priority. And as Rotarians, what can we do? Here are the four areas that we can really be effective. Number one, raising awareness, letting people know where we stand in our fight against polio. Number two, Rotarian engagement. October 24th, World Polio Day, encouraging clubs and districts to do something to let our communities know what we are doing, how close we are, and then advocating. And it's important that districts give 20% of their district designated funds. And that's in large part due to the world match that we get, making those funds turn into even more especially when they're matched with the gate match, gates match, gates match. And then lastly, fundraising. 
the Polio Plus Society has done wonderful this year. And in case you don't know, the Polio Plus Society is where you you um, pledge to to contribute at least $100 a year until polio is eradicated. And we are so close to seeing that happening. I'm amazed at how generous Rotarians are, not only in our districts and our zones, but around the world. We continue to meet the $50 million challenge so that we get the Gates match of $100 million. I'm so grateful for this opportunity to have served Thank you. Thank you for the role that each of you continue to play in polio eradication. I encourage you to welcome past District Governor Bruce Azevedo, who has so wonderfully served District 6910 as foundation chair for the last several years. He has worked alongside me this past year as incoming pol in polio now coordinator, done a fabulous job. And I know he will do an incredible job as in polio now coordinator for Georgia. So please welcome Bruce and thank you. Thank you for the support that you continue to give to our polio eradication efforts. I will end this as I end all of my speeches and presentations. Polio anywhere is a threat to children everywhere. Thank you. All right, and now we're going to hear from incoming Zone 34 in Polio Now coordinator, Bruce Azevedo. Thank you, Chris. Let's get this first slide on. Um, yeah, thank you, Chris. I'm very fortunate to be an in Polio Now coordinator with experienced EPNs, C's in Zone 34, like um, Jeff Michaelman in Florida and, and Lindsay Cancino covering Puerto Rico. North and the Southern Caribbean. We're going to make a great team. Um, I bring to the team uh, 20 years of foundation experience, including four years as a district Rotary Foundation chair. Uh, I'd like to mention just three things in our three minutes that we have on the many goals that we do have. I mentioned three of them, and that is this slide. Uh, let's see here, code. Go back one. I think it went one too far. Yeah, this slide right here um, shows the QR code that links uh, to an online district designated funds form referred to as DDF, which is a really important form. It's important for each of our uh, districts to obligate 20% of their DDF to polio as soon as possible. This form is for district governors and Rotary Foundation chairs to authorize the use of DDF according to the decisions of their uh, district Rotary Foundation committee. Uh, the DRCs and governors should not begin filling this uh, online form out until they're ready to submit it. Um, they can see a, pre, uh, a preview of the online form before proceeding by clicking on the QR code where the PDF will open up for displays. That's going to be the easiest way to, uh, to designate your 20%. Uh, club excellence uh, is the $1,500 polio goal for each of our clubs. By clicking on the QR code there, the Rotarians uh, will pull up a Rotary.org website where they can donate directly the amount they wish, including a reoccurring contribution. The form will remind them that their donation helps Rotary and its partners reach every child with the polio vaccine. Thanks to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, your contribution will be tripled. And the third slide is, is the Polio Society. Members will receive a Polio Plus Society pin showing they are annual donors to the NPolio goal. We are asking each district to have a Polio Plus uh, district chair to help with increasing the number of Polio uh, Society members in each of our districts. Each district seems to have uh, established a uh, a variety of amounts of contributions to become a society member. I've, I've been aware of the $100 annual and I've heard the $1,000 annual. Uh, in either case, this is a commitment to uh, contribute until we eradicate polio. Um, as in uh, polio now coordinators, uh, we are here to help the districts and the zones in any way to accomplish uh, Rotary's goal to end polio. And now that concludes, I'd like to pass it on to Alex Wilkins. Thank you very much. I do very much appreciate that. Um, I'd like to switch gears and just invite everybody here to the summit in Pittsburgh. We've heard uh, we've heard it mentioned just a few times. Uh, just a glance on things you probably already know. The learning seminar begins on Wednesday morning, October the 23rd. 
The summit itself begins after lunch on Thursday, October the 24th. And I want to touch on four focuses, four of our focuses that, that are just huge to me. The first, a deliberate emphasis on the value and the capabilities of our PDGs. If you attend this summit, I promise you, you will go home more prepared to support your district. Second focus, World Polio Day. You've heard that over and over again. It's the Thursday during our summit. We're collaborating with the University of Pittsburgh where Dr. Jonas Salk did his research and we've invited, among others, John Germ and Mike McGovern. And of course, Nancy Barbie's mentioned that the flame will be there. We're gonna make this World Polio Day one to remember. Third, a more robust emerging leader program this year than we've had in the past. And lastly, a hands-on service project. Hands-on, get a little dirty with sleep in heavenly peace to build beds for local children that do not currently have a bed to sleep in. Those are some of our highlights. You've probably heard of more. Chris Justice, pick it up and you're gonna talk about others you might've heard. Thanks so much, Alex. So. I, what was supposed to happen here is our friend Marshall Butler was supposed to uh, come on and do the uh, top 10 list. Um, he is not here due to another obligation. So he has tasked me with channeling my inner David Letterman and handling the top 10 reasons that you want to make sure you are at the Pittsburgh Summit. All right. Top 10 reasons to attend the 2024 Zoom Summit in Pittsburgh. You are going to hear from Rotary International senior leaders because who doesn't want to see past RI presidents and trustees strut their stuff? All right. Sorry, guys, my timing is off. All right. Number nine, Friday morning workshops are back. Get ready to take home actionable information or at least some really cool pins. Number eight, inspirational sessions by a Rotary Peace Fellow and an up-and-coming Rotary actor because who doesn't love a good cry and standing ovation? Number seven, Foundation Shark Tank. I can't wait for this one. You can fund the next big project and pretend you're Mark Cuban for a day. Number six, dive into artificial intelligence because the future is now and we could all use a little help from our robot friends. Number five, local flavor is included. No pierogies, but a Pittsburgh podcast host who will give you all the local gossip and none of the calories. Number four, a PDG forum like you've never seen before. Think adult beverages, cookies, and absolutely zero PowerPoints. Number three, whiskey tasting with PDG Ron Napier because nothing says fellowship like a good single malt. Number two, class dinners on Friday night. We know the food and fellowship isn't the attraction. It's the bragging rights of who has the biggest class. And number one, President Stephanie and Director Patrick's will be there. If you miss it, they'll know. Trust us. And that's your top 10 reasons. Cue glass breaking. All right. Bonus time. Early bird discount ends on August 15th. So don't wait unless you enjoy paying more for procrastination. So get those registrations in. All right, guys. We are wrapping the program portion and we're about to uh, open breakouts. Uh, make sure you stay connected with us on all of our social media channels. Uh, we've got Facebook, of course, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, and the artist formerly known as Twitter. That would be X. All right. And our next Zoom formation uh, should be August 5th of 2024. And we're going to go ahead and open those breakouts. Remember, you can meet with uh, folks to talk about the Rotary Foundation, uh, membership, our public image team, and uh, to hear more about the summit. So you can take all your summit questions um, into that room.